Hey guys, the next guy here, and we're back with a new and final installment of the Problem Solvers Season 1 Recap. Yes, I just sir. have to say, I've yes, enjoyed sir. every episode yes, thus far, and I'm glad to be finishing this season and uploading it to YouTube. And for those of you who hasn't seen Part 1, I've placed a link in the description for you. Nice. And with that being said, let's get into the video. I'm going to destroy this factory! Listen guys, I know I said I enjoyed every episode of this show, but if there were to be an episode I hate the most, it would probably be this one. Episode 6, Hide and Seek Ninjas, starts off with her daughter and her mother playing hide and seek. I'm sure nothing crazy is about to happen. Three, Mississippi? Wait, what's that? Oh no, they finally tracked us down. What a tragic park scene. Almost as saddening as Batman's origin story, especially when the little girl calls out for her mommy. Mom? Mommy? The episode continues with the girl enlisting the aid of the problem solvers to find her mom, to the dismay of Roba. The problem solvers go back to the scene of the crime and find Tux Dog hiding in the same spot the girl's mother was. He ends up helping the problem solvers find the Gosiki clan, the ninja clan that took her mother. Go figure, because hide and seek you get it? <laughs> that was a horrible joke. After arguing with Horace, Roba confesses his dark past. How does he even have a past? I don't know, but apparently he's a monster at hide and seek, and the Gosiki clan could never find him, which is good because the only way to get the girl's mother back is a game of hide and seek. And oh yeah, I forgot to say, the girl in her mother's clan is the Haido clan, so the Haido clan is hiding from the Gosiki clan. I think you get the joke. Oh brother, this guy stinks! You're probably gonna live in a cage. Oh no! Oh yeah! <laughs> Robo comes in for the clutch like the boss he is and successfully hides from the Gosiki clan, saving their day. There's only one problem, however. Who's gonna find Robo? You already know Alfred comes in for the clutch, cause he's the real MVP of this episode. Episode 7, the Mayan ice cream stripper, I mean ice cream caper, starts off with the problem solvers chasing a hot air balloon that stole a hot air balloon by means of hot air balloon. So you know, a basic case. Hello, my name is Sweetie Creamy. Another exciting case solved by the problem solvers. While back at home, the problem solvers are met by Sweetie Creamy. Reading that out loud, her name sounds like a stripper name, so she can't be trusted. Anyways, she's the ice cream factory's owner's daughter. She asks for the problem solver's help in stopping her crazy father from destroying the factory. Sweetie Creamy also offers the problem solvers some ice cream called Mind Control. Like, come on, none of the problem solvers are gonna fall for that. Thanks. I love it. Horace, Sweetie you Creamy. simp. Anyways, the voice actor who plays Sweetie Creamy sounds familiar. So after doing some research, I found out that the voice actor is in fact Pamela Atlon, oh, yes, the same woman who voiced Bobby in King of the Hill. You gonna kick me in the nose? Am I gonna do it? Yes. When am I gonna do it? Don't know. They arrive at the owner's ice cream factory and plan whether or not to execute the man hit monkey style. Sweetie Creamy tells them of the owner's dinosaur shaped bombs, but Alfe runs in anyways and promptly kicked out. The owner went insane and is trying to destroy it. Mayan, you boys are in this way over your head. The Mayans were a group of Mexican extraterrestrials who ruled the Yucatan Peninsula for 500 years through a very sophisticated form of mind control. If that mind control is in the hands of some cats who make ice cream, anybody who eats ice cream is going to be like slaves with chains on their brains, and that's in a book. With the advice from Tux Dog, the problem solvers sneak through the back door, catching the owner off guard and stopping him from destroying the factory. Problem solved. Did I hear him right? Did he just say something about his daughter? It doesn't matter because Horace is. A girl can be better than a drum set. What? You sick, sick man. Horace is brainwashed from eating that Mayan ice cream, and it turns out the owner is the good guy, and the daughter wants world domination. She's evil, kind of like a stripper. Anyways, Alfred with his squirrel cheeks defeats Sweetie Creamy, saving the day. 
Episode 8, Bad Cat, my second favorite oh, episode. Yes, the episode opens with Horace taking a shower with his short on. And I don't blame him with Robo rubbing cream while he's asleep and all. The emergency alert is rung and the problem solvers get a call from the new mayor. I'm glad they got rid of the cheap ass old mayor. You cheap bitch! Also, I forgot to say this, but in the last episode, I also searched up what species Alpha is. Alpha is a turd monster. Wee, wee. Nah, you'll hurt yourself, Robuck. Come on. I'll never get hurt. Anyways, they meet up with the new mayor who tells the problem solvers someone has stolen the whole supply of salsa. Alpha appears covered in mysterious slime, probably the same slime shot at them by the alien Girl Scouts. No, wait, never mind. It's itch cream. Alpha been itching all day, and it turns out he caught fleas at the scene of the crime. They use Robo's gadget. From a Mr. Bad Cat. Why does his gadget have to sound like that? But yeah, they use Robo's gadget to discover where the flea sack came from. It came from Bad Cat, the supervillain. So the problem solver visits Tux Dog. Pay attention. Bad Cat is a supervillain. His hideout is his board game super casino. He lives there with his Bad Cat army. This flea leaves no doubt it was he who stole the salsa. You see, beating a supervillain requires a super team. Congratulations, you'll be working with me. Wow. Yay. Tux gives them some crayons and coloring book and tells them to fuck off because he wants to capture Bad Cat himself. Take that. Tux Dog ends up being captured, so the problem solvers decide to sneak in themselves. They gain the trust of Bad Cat and enter his lair. We see previous problem solvers villains, such as that one guy I swore who died. They also see characters in future episodes. Anyways, they sneak into the event to retrieve Salsa and find Tux Dog tied up to the off-brand Hungry Hungry Hippos. They try to save him but are then found by Bad Cat. They're placed right next to Tux Dog. However, using Alfie's hairball he gets from chewing his hair, the problem solvers and Tux Dog are freed from the trap. Bad Cat is getting away, so Tux Dog tries to use the sleep gun on him but misses. To miss him and let him get away? No, that was the one part of my plan that didn't work. Stop the cap! <laughs> Stop the cap right now! <laughs> episode 9, Foxboro. The episode begins in Robo's room. Alfei wakes up Robo feeling like today's off. He takes him to his drum set to show how it sounds wrong, but Robo is still shocked on how Alfei got into his fucking room. They argue over whether or not Alfei is right, and if you're wondering why the both of them are dirty, it's because Alfei took Robo to a small dirty hole in the back. Anyways, Horace reveals they have an important meeting from the mayor. They stop at the pizza shop on their way there and order pizza bagels. The pizza bagels taste funny, but Alfei is the only one to notice it. They think the turd monster is going crazy, partly because he's always sneaking into their bedrooms, so they decide to take him to the vet. The vet walks in and Robo, the sexual deviant that he is, notices that the vet isn't even wearing any pants. However, the vet tells him everything is fine and there's no problem. Dude, it threatens the social balance of our civilization. I told you there's no problem with my pants. No problem. Yeah, there is. I'm going home to get my problem stamp. Robo, wait! I don't want to be anywhere with people with no pants. Wait, what? Nobody in the town has pants on. Something is really wrong. They all go to the new mayor's office. The new mayor looks like he stopped doing crack, and that's odd. Oh yeah, he fires them. What? That's right. Alfei asks to finish the mayor's soda, but it tastes off, so he spits it back out, causing the new mayor to short circuit. It is then revealed that he's a robot and Horace now believes Alpha and Roba. The whole town is robot and chases the problem solvers, so Roba and Alpha create a soda machine gun to deal with them. Oh, ah! The Iron Giant appears sounding like Wizard Frog and not Vin Diesel. You three make a lot of problems and we hate problems. They try to shoot him with the soda machine gun, but it isn't working because Alpha is using diet soda. Horace and Roba tell him to use the actual soda. I buy problems! No way! Problem. No! After defeating not Vin Diesel, Tux Dog flies in to save the problem solvers. However, there's two Tux Dogs and the real one hates getting soda on his suit. So Alpha has to decide which one to spit on. He ends up spitting on the real Tux Dog and Tux Dog promptly ends the game. A game? Yeah, it turned out to be a test set up by Tux Dog. Tux Dog was testing the problem solver's skills, but he basically kidnapped them and forced them to solve a problem. Not to worry though, they at least got to see Tux Dog's nephew. 
Tux Dog's an asshole. The episode starts off at the Clock Museum. The problem solvers are met by a crazy woman hiding in an alley. Apparently, she runs the Problem Solvers fan blog and has a particular attraction to Roba. Roba pushes her away because he never had this much attention. She still ends up following them around because Horace think her blog would be great for business. At least he recognized them $15 isn't cutting it. Anyways, they get a task from the museum owner to find the missing clock that grants users mastery over time. Don't worry, sir. We're gonna find this clock using the power of clues. What an exciting case! <laughs> They use Roba's gadget to scan a piece of evidence they find. I have to scan it? Huh. According to my cool logo scanner, it belongs to ZJ Laserden. That still sounds weird. But anyway, it belongs to ZJ. I said ZJ. It belongs to ZJ Laserden. ZJ is using it for the million dollar skateboard race. Alfie tries to grab the clock, but the skater kid refuses to give it back. Bye -bye. Good thing Katrina was tying Roba's shoes. When the problem solvers go to grab the clock, someone in a cupcake suit swoops in and steals it. They track the lady back to her shop. She's using it to break the laws of time and make tons of cupcakes. Hey, get out of here. We're closed. Hey, stop using that stolen clock. Oh, small businesses are hard to run. Damn, she's a small business just trying to make ends meet. I kind of feel bad for her. Anyways, they arrest the cupcake bitch for crimes against time, but Katrina ends up stealing the shit along with Roba. I guess strippers aren't the only ones you can't trust. But if you press this special button on the back of the clock, you and whoever you're touching can freeze time and stay there <laughs> forever. Come here, lover robot! Katrina ends up pausing time so that Roba and her can spend eternity together. Roba proposes to Katrina in a plot to unfreeze Horus and Alfe. Once done, the problem solvers plan for Horace to distract Katrina while Alfe destroys the clock out of Katrina's hands. Okay, but you know at weddings you're supposed to kiss the bride, not hug the bride, right? What? No! I've never kissed anyone before. Roba's gonna take one for the team and kiss Katrina, but he fails to kiss her, and she soon realizes what's going on. I'm totally gonna destroy our universe! Stop it, baby! Don't do that! Cause I got something I wanna tell you! I love you! And your hair! So nice! When we snuggle with my tongue's eyes From the heat of our hearts Mine is robotic, yours is human parts Snuggling, huggling When we snuggle, our love is troubling Damn, nigga! <laughs> Roba sings a whole song just to distract Katrina in time for Alfie to destroy the clock Guess who's going to jail tonight? Guess who's going to jail tonight? Guess who's gonna jail tonight? Once the clock is destroyed, Katrina is arrested. She loses interest in Roba and now loves Alfe. Thus, the episode ends. Episode 11, Breakfast Wars, starts at a kid's house. Danny, the kid, is out of his favorite cereal. Okay, that just sounds like it has crack in it. Look at the kid, he's shaking. The problem solvers decide to help him because he's on crack and they might be able to extort money out of him. At home, Horace announces a new position and Alpha and Robo starts fighting over it. Whoever does a good job on the case gets the hat. Robo uses his inferior science instead of Alpha science to decode the commercial. They end up having to go on a scavenger hunt. They solve the puzzle and bring Tyrone Bigum, I mean Danny, to the shipment of crack. Danny can't get enough of this stuff. Peanut butter and crack <laughs> The fish comes to steal the kid, which is even more sus. He's this close from me calling him the magic M word. Anyways, without a paycheck from the kid, the problem solvers visit Tux Dog for help. Tux Dog? Oh, hi. Sorry, we didn't know you had company. Problem solvers, take a seat. I'd like to introduce you to someone. Danny's mom. They go back to save Danny and we see Professor Molester sprinkling him with cereal. Danny's mom and the fish begin to bicker like parents. Wait a minute, is Professor Molester Danny's father? Did I misjudge him? Danny's mom and the fish begin fighting. Meanwhile, Alpha and Robo are arguing over whose science is better. They hear Horace's speech, so Danny's mother and his father, Professor Sugarpuff, stops fighting. Daddy's mom? Professor? Will you marry me? Yes. Look at that. The problem solvers help Danny's mom and the professor rekindle their marriage and attend their wedding. And I'll rip it in three for sharing. You shouldn't have done that, Danny's dad. The problem solvers get pissed that their crack money's useless, so they kick everyone asses. Thus, the episode ends. 
The episode starts off with Alfei being vandalized by a sticker graffiti artist. The problem solvers are receiving hate comments, so they decide to take a high profile case. Coincidentally enough, they catch the graffiti vandalist, Dorkface, in zoo jail. Dorkface sends himself a package, and the package ends up being an escape. How the fuck did it fit through? Anyways, they end up needing the help of the problem solvers to recapture Dorkface. Agent Legit is giving them shit. He thinks they're lame. However, he should be worrying more about rubbing some lotion on them ashy elbows. They visit the occult store to learn more about the stickers Dorkface used as a getaway. The furry explains the magic stamps allow you to teleport to any time or place if you have the correct postage. This gives Horus a plan. I bet your plan isn't a master plan. <laughs> oh, it is. You What's up with the touching? The plan is for Robert to dress like a lamppost and ambush Dorkface. <laughs> It works and they capture Dorkface so the mayor holds a celebration. Speaking of mayor, is that a new one? Is there some sort of Naruto-esque time skip happening? I just want to say, there's three people I need to thank. Because without them, I never would have solved this problem. Hey guys, we're about to be famous. They are the mayor and his two deputy mayors. What the? Hold on. And I should also mention the problem solvers. <laughs> You guys are pathetic. That double dealing ashy ass bastard Agent Legit didn't give the problem solvers credit. I want to punch him in his head, right on the soft spot. Anyways, the problem solvers confronts Agent Ledick, but while arguing, Dorkface gets away. Stop! Yeah. Stop! You're too late. That was the last land post in town. No, 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 yeah. Dorkface sends them to a 2D dimension where he's praised for his work. The problem solvers also receive fame and recognition because the dimension is superficial. Love you! Wait, since everybody here is flat, that means they're incredibly superficial because they only care about the surface. Agent Legit runs off to solve the problem by himself because he's a dick, and the problem solvers come up with their own plan. Their plan is to send an occult email to the 3D world to get back to their dimension. Alfie doesn't want to leave because he's famous here, and he also meets Tux Dog's double ganger. Greetings, problem solvers. Flat Dog's way better than Tux Dog. He loves us, and he's cool. And like everyone else here in Flatland, I think problem solving's the cat's meow. I can imagine with a cool dog that likes me. This is awesome. Wanna catch a movie with me later? Ah, uh, please, horse, can we stay? They decide to put a hold on the problem solving while they catch a movie with Flat Dog. <laughs> How is this guy not dead? Agent Legit taunts the problem solvers, saying they can't solve this problem. This gives the problem solvers a change of heart. They end up arresting Dorkface and they go back to their dimension. They prove Agent Legit wrong and they save the day. Thus, the episode ends. Hey guys, totally not a furry 3321 back. <laughs> and can we talk about how good the problem solvers is? If you think about it, each episode has its own way of covering a real life problem. From idols not being as perfect as you think, to adult arguments over what's best for children, to not living up to everyone's expectations and being fine with it. The show even recognizes Horace's ugly haircut. Let's what? Maybe that crazy haircut guy is right. What the? All in all, I just have to say, putting away from its flashing vibrant colors, The Problem Solvers is a good cartoon show, and I'm glad I was able to cover season 1. Oh yeah, if you're new to the channel or enjoyed watching, a like and subscribe would be great. And it's totally worth it. And with that being said, I hope to see y'all soon and bye.